All right, let's talk about editing again. Not only because, like I said in my last editing video, we're coming out of NaNoWriMo, a lot of people are about to edit their novels for the very first time, but also because the last video that we did about editing was really my five tips for emotionally pushing through and getting through that second draft slump as you edit your novel for the first time versus this time around, I wanna give you some action steps. So they're gonna kinda of go hand in hand. If you missed that video, I will link it below Below, but this video is going to be about my process and how I approach developmental edits specifically and just editing my novel in general and how I start that process. Just a quick disclaimer here, there is always going to be people who think that I am saying you have to do it this way and that's not the case. This is my process that I actually created after watching a lot of other people's process and I picked and chose the parts that worked for me. And so I wanna encourage you to do that exact same thing. You know, take the parts of what I'm about to share that work for you and just throw away the rest. If it does not work for you, it does not have to be done this way. The things that we focus on when we're editing our novels is about making it better, but you don't have to make it better the same way someone else does. You can find a way to make it better your way. Disclaimer over, I should have done that in like a fast voice. This is just my process, take what works for you, and don't worry about the rest, blah, 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 Yeah, okay, cool. All right. With that disclaimer in mind, here's how I like to approach editing my novel for the very first time after the first draft, aka it's known as the second draft. Shocker. I know. Oh, uh, okay. The first thing that I like to do, which is actually really hard to do, and I did not initially do this until many, many, many writers told me this was a thing, is to actually give the novel space. Close that computer, walk away from it, and just step away from your story for a period of time. So some writers just do a week or two, uh, other writers do months. I have found that I typically can only do about a month or so away from it before I really, really wanna get back to it and start working on it again. But that month away or whatever time period that you go with is going to give you fresh eyes when it comes to your story. And you're gonna find that you see things that you just couldn't before because like I've talked about many times on this channel, there's such a thing as writer's blindness. You just, you've looked at something so many times in the same format that you just don't see the problems anymore. Your eyes glaze right over the typo. You don't even notice things like if the character is in one location in chapter one and then in chapter two they're on the other side of town and you never, you know, got them from here to there because it's all up in your head. You've been living in the story for so long that it's hard to remember what actually made it onto the page and what's still kind of up here floating around that you know, but your readers don't actually know that because you forgot to get it on the page if that makes sense. Part of getting away from it is almost just about forgetting so that you can come back in and almost like relearn what your story is via what's on the page versus, you know, the whole muddled thing as you were drafting it. I don't know if that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if I'm making sense. But then that leads to my second step, which is to print it out. And the reason that I print it out is actually for the exact same reason. It's that writer's blindness. I'm usually still too close to the story. I still remember enough that if I see it in a, you know, the same Word doc that I've been working in, typing in for the last however long, then I still miss things. So this has been very helpful for me as well because it just helps me to see it in a new format and something about seeing it in a way that I've never seen it before helps me to catch things that I would otherwise miss. And again, this is not a tip that I made up. I heard this from tons of other writers and whether you print it out right away or you do some of the edits I'm gonna talk about and then you print it out and you use this trick, either way, it's at a point when you're not seeing mistakes in the manuscript as you're currently reading it, this can help to print it out and help you catch things that you would otherwise miss. So I also use this tip at the very end of my process for proofreading because it's just as effective then. When it comes to that stage, when I'm proofreading, I tend to actually print out the book. I think these are all, most of these are proof copies. They're actually not the final version of the book. And I was just proofreading them and I ordered a copy to see it 
in a different format than on my computer. So that's valuable. But when you're coming up to your first draft, I tend to just print it on, you know, regular size paper. And either I print it at home or a couple times I've tried printing it at Office Max. But I found the cheapest way is to just print it at home and slap it in a binder. And don't forget to put page numbers on because otherwise it can get a little bit confusing if for some reason the papers happen to get mixed up. If for some reason you want to try creating a proof copy like the ones that I have right here, I actually do have a video all about how I print these before publishing. So I will link that for you to watch after this video. And then also I'm assuming you won't have a cover yet because the first draft, it's not really ready for a cover. You're not at that stage yet. Then I also do have a video on how you can make temporary covers just as something that allows you to print a copy like this. So I will link that video below as well in case you wanna check that out after this one. However you decide to print out your book, that leads to my third step, which is what I call the fast read through. And this again, it's not original to me. It's just something that I've kind of taken from other writers and I've kind of made it my own. So you might do this one a little bit differently from me, but the reason that I call it a fast read through is that my goal is to get through it as fast as possible the way that a reader would read read it so that I can get that bird's eye view of the story as a whole. If I slow down, and I do this often by the way, and I start to edit, you know, nitpick on a page, I get stuck there. I'm back in the same place that I was when I was writing the story where I'm too far in it and I'm too in the moment of that particular scene and I can't see the story as a whole. And it's really hard to get a good grasp of what your full story is unless you read it quickly. So that's the goal of the fast read through is to get through it as fast as you can. That said, I do have a really hard time not stopping to edit things that I notice. So there's a few things that I do that help me to keep going so that I don't get totally stuck in that scene and I can get through the full story and get that full picture. The first thing I like to do is actually dedicate a notebook to edits and to everything that I'm noticing as I'm doing my fast read through. So I'll write down notes, everything that I see, whether it's, you know, page number, this character did this, I wanna write this later. Or chapter 10, I need to go back and possibly delete this. Or chapter 22, is this the midpoint? Is my pacing right? You know, things like that. That way I know that I have everything in one place and I also will write it on the manuscript itself sometimes depending on how big the note is. But that way I have gotten that note for what I want to do on the page, but I don't actually spend all the time it takes to actually do that edit because just writing a note to yourself can take what, one minute or two minutes, but actually completing the edit could take 30 minutes, could take an hour. And so that again could slow you down. So if it's not something that will slow you down, like fixing a typo, just, you know, scratch it out and write the correct thing there. But if it's something you're like, okay, this is going to take me a while to fix, write it in the notebook, get it on paper so you don't forget what you want to do, but then keep going. And that leads to the specific things that I look for when I'm in this very first round of developmental edits. So I'm not worrying about typos at this moment. I'm not even worrying about making perfect sentences, or at least I'm trying not to. Uh, what I really think is important when you're starting out is the big picture stuff and just getting the bones of the story right before you worry about prettifying it with some makeup. You know what I mean? I hinted at this in the last video on edits, but I just wanna dig into it a little bit more, things that you can look for. The very first thing, in my opinion, is to pay attention to the characters and look for any issues that they might have. This could mean a lot of things, so just so you know, this is not a comprehensive list, but some of the things that you can look for as you're paying attention to your character throughout the story is, do they have an arc from beginning to end? Do they start the story with a problem that gets answered? Do they learn something as they go through the story? Do they go through a transformation and a change that makes them either better or maybe worse? than who they were, but they're not the same person as they were in the beginning. That's one of the fundamentals for a story. Are they two dimensional or flat? Do they act out of character, out of the character that you've made them to be? For example, they start out the book really quiet and shy, and that's just who they are. Then in the middle of the book, randomly, they've decided to be bold and tell everyone how they feel. Now, it's not to say that you can't, again, have that change throughout the story, but it has to be, you know, built up and led to that change. You can't just have them be one way, 
then suddenly they're a different way and you don't want that on the page you want them to be consistently who they are and as change happens that's fine but you actually build up to it if that makes sense this is not a comprehensive list it could just be so many things it could even be is their dialogue consistent throughout the story do they sound like the same person throughout the story things like that so i would encourage you to do your research on characters and it doesn't always get figured out in the very first round of edits. You might have to do multiple edits before you really start to feel like your characters are consistent. But that is one of the biggest things to pay attention to in every single edit that you do. I also like to watch for plot holes. And by that, I mean things that can be small. Like, for example, if they're sitting in a chair and then in the very next paragraph, they're standing across the room and you just maybe forgot where you put them, <laughs> which happens. Don't worry if that happens to you. It can be embarrassing, but it's also kind of funny and it, it just happens. It's one of the many reasons that you would never ever publish a first draft because things like that do happen. Or it could be a bigger plot hole. Like for example, I'm gonna use one of my own because everybody has plot holes. Don't feel bad if you have them. But I think one of my most hilarious ones to date is that on the cover, hold on. The tagline for this book is, who will rule the crown will decide. In my first draft, the crown did not decide. That wasn't, I don't even know what to say about that without giving things away. But let's just say I fixed that plot hole, but that's a very good example of a large plot hole. And plot holes can be just literally anything in your plot that is not matching up with something else in the plot. And so it's sort of like a street with a pothole in the middle. And it's like, that didn't match at all. Let's go back and fill that in fix that baby because that doesn't work. They are hard to describe because everyone's story is so different, but trust me, you'll know it when you see it. Another thing that I like to watch for when I'm in my first round of edits is unbalanced writing. So what I mean by this is writing tends to be made up of a few different types of things. You've got your dialogue, obviously, then you've got your scene setting where you're describing locations and objects and whatnot so that the reader can picture what's going on. And then you've got your narration, which is more describing the inward stuff that's going on, describing from a narrator's point of view, I guess you could say. I don't know if I'm describing that particular really well so feel free to look it up but usually writers prefer one or more of these things and they might not always do some of the other things so there can be a, a unbalanced feel like maybe the book is all dialogue and it's like talking heads or maybe it's all scene setting and you feel very distant from the characters because they never actually talk to each other paying attention to which one is maybe a little bit off balance. Maybe it's missing or maybe there's too much of something, which leads to the other two things that I watch for. Places to add more to the story and places to delete. This is probably the biggest, simplest one is, oh my gosh, there's a whole section here between, I don't know, say day one and day 10. We need something to fill in that gap. There is this huge gap. The reader needs to know what's going on here. That's a place to add to the story and basically, do more drafting. Then there is stuff like, here's the start of the day, here's the end of the day. We don't really need everything that comes in between, but I have meticulously written every single minute and every time they sat in a chair and every time they stood up and every time they got a drink and every time they brushed their teeth and every time they went to talk to their dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but the stuff that when you go back in your edits and you look at it, you're like, oh, that's not really relevant to the story at all. I don't think the reader no needs to know that. I really don't. I think that this would be better off if I delete it. That's probably one of the hardest ones to do, but it's very valuable for your edits. And sometimes it can be blatantly obvious when you go back to read, you're like, oh, this did not need to be there. If you are brand new to edits, this is another pro tip. It's very common to be either an underwriter where you do need to add a lot more to the story in your second draft, or to be an overwriter where you have to delete a lot of stuff in the second draft. Um, that's not to say that you won't have a little bit of both. I think everybody has a little bit of both, but a lot of writers tend to lean one way or the other. So with my first novel, I was a major overwriter. I deleted, I think 30,000 words, something around there. And then with 
other novels down the road as I started to write faster and would be then more bare bones as I was writing it, I realized that I usually had to add a lot more. And now I tend to find that my first drafts are about half the size of my full finished novels. That's not to say that I add another 30, 40, 50,000 words all in one go. I tend to add in pieces. So maybe I will add a thousand or two thousand word chapter here that was needed and then maybe i add to the end of the book usually i have to add a lot to the end of the book because i don't flesh that out very well and usually i have to add little bits to the middle maybe a little bit more to the beginning and it slowly begins to grow but i tend to need to add a lot whatever the case may be don't feel bad if you have to add or delete this is literally part of the process we all have to do this but again if you want to watch those videos i will link them below along with with my video on showing versus telling which is another thing and the last thing I think on my list yep where we have to watch for this in the first round of edits because a lot a lot a lot a lot of first drafts are almost all telling telling can look like you've got the story but it's just not exciting it's sort of dry it's like the narrator's just saying they did this they felt that he was mad she was hurt instead of showing it by writing something like he slammed the door she broke down fell to the ground and started crying like that's showing it versus telling the reader how they felt this is one of the hardest things to see so it might take you a few round of edits it definitely takes me more than one round of edits so the very first round of edits, AKA the second draft, is really just me trying to catch as much as I can. But I know that I'm gonna come back to it and I know that it's gonna take a few tries to really get the characters right and find all the plot holes and really find that balance between the different types of storytelling, adding in the right amount of stuff and deleting the right amount of stuff. All of these things, honestly, are edits that I will continue to do the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh draft all the way up to publishing sometimes, depending on what it is. And that leads to my final step when it comes to these type of edits, because there are so many, even just listening to this right now, you might feel overwhelmed. I know I do when I approach the very first round of edits, that second draft slump, I talked about it in the last video, because for me, that is the most overwhelming thing to see the massive number of things that I know need to be fixed. And this might just be me, but whenever I come to that point in editing, I can feel a little bit of writer's block. And it's the kind of writer's block that's actually in disguise as fear and perfectionism because I am just terrified of the overwhelming number of stuff that needs to get fixed and I'm worried that I won't get it right. So if you are in that boat, if that resonates with you, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments because it's normal. You are not alone. We all get to that point at some stage in writing where we worry, what if it's not right? What if I'm not good enough to tell this story? Don't worry if you feel that way sometimes. But what helps me with the overwhelm is actually going back to that step that I told you guys where I have the notebook, I have everything written out, and then I take it one note at a time. And I only worry about one edit at a time. Now, it takes me a while to remember this. Each time I approach edits, I feel the overwhelm, I struggle, and then I finally just sit down and do it. So if you want to go back to my tips on how to push through that second draft slump, I will link that video below again, because it really is tough sometimes, but it really does help me to cross one thing off the list at a time. Then you're not worrying about 50 billion edits at once. You're just going, okay, right now, I think the scene needs a little more dialogue. Okay, let's do that. And it's just one thing at a time. And then you cross it off, you go to the next thing. Now I think that I need to make that dialogue fit the character a little better. Okay. <laughs> and you just keep going like that. And I guess step six is to repeat the process over and over until you're happy with it. And it can take quite a few edits. I tend to need five, six, or seven edits before I feel like I have caught the majority of things that I can see. And then that leads to working with critique partners, beta readers, and editors who can see the things that you missed. That is a whole other video. So if you want to know more about those things, I actually do have videos on beta readers. I will link my playlist below for that as well. Tons of great advice there for working with people who can help you spot the stuff that you didn't see. But before you ever do that, always make sure that you catch the stuff you do know about because you don't need other people to tell you if you already know. That's one of my biggest tips for beta readers is don't work with them if you already know what you need to fix. If you already can see the problems, 
don't ask other people to tell you what you already know. That was a little bonus tip, I guess, for this video. I hope that helps you edit your novel when you get to that point. And again, thank you for giving this video a thumbs up, for subscribing, for ringing the bell so you get notified when I have videos come out. All of these things help my channel. Thank you for sharing and just being here and being amazing. I will talk to you guys again very soon. Bye. I have been recording for 40 minutes, you guys, and she hasn't moved an inch. Do you want to go play laser? <laughs> Let's do it. You want to go? <laughs> All right. Bye.